Do you think the US military has too many medals nowadays? I mean, like, look at General Pershing, General Eisenhower, and then General Petraeus. Like, why does a modern day corporal have more awards than the biggest generals from the biggest wars in human history? First of all, if you're looking at a picture of General Eisenhower and he only has like six ribbons on, it's because he's not wearing all of the awards that he received from all the different countries of the world. Now, it is true that there were less American medals back in the day, but it doesn't mean he only had six ribbons. He had a whole bunch of ribbons that he simply didn't wear out of modesty. And some admirals and generals still do this to this day. You see pictures of like Admiral Gilday and other people that only have like three ribbons. It's not because they only have three, it's because they're being modest and only wearing their top awards. Now on the other hand, if you look at the pictures of their uniforms when they actually wear all of their awards, it looks like the generals of today. Like 30 ribbons from their shoulder all the way down to their pocket. It looks just like what they wear today. The difference is back then it was more likely they wouldn't wear all of them, and nowadays it's more likely that they will. Now that being said, it is objectively true that there are way more awards now than there were back in, say, World War I, World War II, and even Korea. And there are a couple different reasons for that. Number one, at some point we decided to have different awards for the same thing, but one for each branch. Like there's an Army Distinguished Service Medal, you know, Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, Coast Guard Distinguished Service Medal, Navy Distinguished Service Medal, and then like you know, the Defense Distinguished Service Medal and the Homeland Security Distinguished Service Medal. All of these medals are for the exact same thing, but you get a different one based on what department you're in. Department of the Navy, Department of the Army, whatever branch you're in, whatever department you're in, that's the version of the medal that you're gonna get. And that goes for several awards. There's a whole bunch of good conduct medals, a whole bunch of distinguished service medals, a whole bunch of all kinds of different medals, even different medals of honor. There's different versions of the Medal of Honor based on what branch you're in when you get it. So in other countries, you have one medal for one thing. There's one medal, maybe in different grades, for merit, one medal for like gallantry, and one medal for something else like long service, and that's it. In the United States, we have a whole bunch of them for each one based on what branch you're in. Another thing is that we simply award more medals and ribbons for things that other countries just consider to be normal, like the Good Conduct Medal. The Air Force actually got rid of their Good Conduct Medal for a while because they're like, why should we you know, make a special medal for good conduct when it's just expected anyway? So they got rid of it and then they brought it back a few years later. So, you know, that's one thing. But Good Conduct, graduating boot camp, why is there a ribbon for graduating boot camp? Honor graduate ribbons, you know, I made a video about that. I do wish I got it, but I would not mind if it didn't exist at all. It's not even consistent across branches. Like in the Army and Air Force, you get a ribbon for graduating boot camp. You know, in the Navy, all I got was that Navy baseball hat right there, the PT cover. And, you know, that's better than getting a ribbon. But I never get to wear that hat. Nobody ever wears that cover. In the Marine Corps, you get something that's actually really special, the Eagle Globe and Anchor, EGA, which you do, you know, you've earned your place, you've earned your right to wear it. That's actually really cool, and I respect the Marines for having that. Now, not every branch is actually doing this. Like, the Air Force is going to issue the most awards for, in my opinion, the least significant things, like the Recognition Award. Like, if you got a trophy, they'll give you a ribbon to recognize it on your ribbon rack, and the Combat Readiness Medal, like, Nothing happened, but we were ready. Well, then you got the Marine Corps over here. You can see somebody that's been serving for 10, 12 years, staff sergeant, gunnery sergeant, and they have three or four ribbons. Now, that is not wrong. Apparently the Marine Corps actually suffered like pressure to issue more awards and you know, medals and ribbons to catch up to the other branches, catch up. Why should they do that? They're doing it right. They're doing the right thing. Stay the way you are. You're actually doing this correctly the way the U.S. military has always done it for hundreds of years at this point. In 1996, it was revealed by the New York Times that the Air Force issues twice as many awards as the Navy. Well, don't worry. There's an easy way to fix all of this. I've got a list of awards here that I would recommend being eliminated, but it's probably never going to happen unless I somehow got into a position of responsibility where by executive order, by you know, the Secretary of the Navy, the Secretary of Defense, or the President would be able to eliminate these. If you don't know, they have the power to just spontaneously create or cease random medals, whatever they want. So the awards that I would recommend being eliminated would be like the Combat Readiness Medal, 
the Air and Space Recognition Medal because that purpose is already covered by the Achievement Medal. The Army Service Ribbon, like you graduated boot camp, congratulations. The Nuclear Deterrence Ribbon, like what? All the boot camp graduation ribbons from all the branches, gone. All the Honor Graduate Ribbons, the Commandant's Letter of Commendation Ribbon from the Coast Guard, gone. The NCO development ribbons, like just make those achievement medals too if you receive them. And the Navy and Marine Corps Expeditionary Medals, which are almost always overruled by the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal. Like, in order to get the Navy Expeditionary Medal, you have to receive, like, the, you know, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. And then because you already have one, you can ask for that to be replaced by the Navy Expeditionary Medal. Like, if you have to actually ask for it to be relevant, it's probably not, you know, needed right now. As cool as it is, as old as it is, it's really hard to actually get, and it's overruled by like four different awards. Now, all this being said, I do respect the award system as it stands. These are suggestions of improvements that I would recommend, and I do follow the, you know, the line of thinking that a lot of people do believe the US does have too many medals, and it could be easily fixed, but, I'm not in a station to affect that change.